Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Krakenfall and, and today we are reacting to the most recent LGIO satisfactory video. Let's game it out satisfactory. I was waiting for a while for this one to just have some time before it, you know, after it came out. I didn't want to I don't want to react to things too early after they've come out. Is definitely like I always say, the first place you should watch a Let's Game It Out video is on his channel. So I will put a link right here. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen the video. But we're watching, I used trains to create absolute mayhem in Satisfactory. We have caught up to the latest Satisfactory videos from Let's Game It Out. The last video with the drones, I, I actually watched that video first. That was the first Satisfactory video I watched on Let's Game It Out's channel, which convinced me to go get Satisfactory because it just looked really cool. And the comments, you guys all told me how awesome a game it was. But that means that now I skipped that one and we're finally caught up to the latest video in the series. I am looking forward to this because I want to see more strategies on trains. I don't use them very often. I have one train route in my world. And last video, I did see Josh found a way to get underground extremely easy without having to use train cars or anything. You just point a hypertube straight at the ground <laughs> and you just get in. So I had to find out, does that still work? So we have... We have all this stuff. I want to distribute it throughout my entire map. I've got this giant factory over here. I want to make little satellite bases over here where the trees are. I need a place to do it and I don't want to build above the world. So it would be nice to be able to just sink the resources down and then put it into a subway, you know? So why don't we try this out? Let's get a hypertube going. Okay, so can I just straight up connect them together? Let's save. Boom boom ground pound. Boom boom ground pound. Let's go! <laughs> oh. Wait. What? Oh no! Am I stuck? Um... Okay, I'm glad we saved. <laughs> so it's good to know that you can actually still do it. I will definitely be making subway entrances with signs and lights and stairs down. I might even make kind of like a, just an underground subway building that just makes it feel like an, a real subway. That'd be cool. Hopefully there aren't too many underground walls. Hopefully there's not too much of that because that will kind of break things up visually. I'll have to build a lot of hyper tubes just to get through like the, the side of the tracks because I definitely will be making a maintenance tunnel alongside the subway. I can already tell I'm gonna be playing this game for a long time. I might break a thousand hours this year. I probably will. I'm already at 500. But Josh looks like he's got a lot of things going on. I can't really tell. It looks like those are all train tracks. So he's probably gonna make another, maybe a train track weave, who knows? And for this video, we are doing Let's Game It Out Bingo again. Everybody seemed to enjoy that, it was really fun. So I did update it. We've got, I think, one and a half bingo cards worth of items. So go ahead in the description, it's a bit.ly link bit.ly link and that will resolve to bingo baker so click on that link in the description and then you can just generate a card it'll be your own personalized unique let's game it out bingo card and then you can play along i've got fps show desecrates nature seconds per frame it'll be different for you so just click the link in the description and you can play bingo with us anyway i'm, I'm excited for this one let's get on with it as always please go watch the video first i already said it once but uh you know, click the link in the description if you haven't clicked the one that popped up on screen earlier. Let's respect Game It Out and his views, and uh, I hope you enjoy the reaction. Let's go. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're playing Satisfactory today, my favorite factory game that's all about excess. Like, you could build a normal factory, but why? When you can make abominations <laughs> I, like I this, do need to and then when build this base gets completely out of control, you can up slide your way across the map and make something even more wild. But that's really the beauty of this game, is take something and make it beautiful in your own way. Like, it gives you stuff like drones, which are used for transporting items, or I you like can make drones. hundreds of them, slap explosives kind of all over though. them, and then send them all across the map and pretend you're in Top Gun. <laughs> Watch your six! Oh, and also I sent them all to try and land on one platform, so now they're just waiting forever. I don't a think you can do that anymore. A beautiful drones into the sky. Anyway, I have gotten to the point, I have caught up in my game of Satisfactory. I haven't released on the Let's Play series yet, but I did get to the point where I, I hit nuclear and I delivered everything with drones. So I have seen how drones work. I don't think they let you connect drones to the same platform anymore, which is unfortunate. 
because that's hilarious. I haven't seen this video in so long. It's been what, like four months now? Like crap, so much has happened since then. This is a trip. Welcome to Satisfactory, where everything in my base is a mess. And in this video, we're gonna try and make that better. Spoiler, we're gonna make it worse. <laughs> While that's all cementing in your brain, let me tell you about today's sponsor. I've partnered with Paradox oh, Interactive sponsor. to highlight a hot deal coming up right now for City Skylines. So let me tell you the two- City Skylines is an excellent game, by the way. Sponsored by, I got sponsored by. City Skylines is like SimCity. I kind of burned out on those games like a long time ago, but I have a friend who loves City Skylines or loves Sim Cities, and he said City Skylines is an awesome spiritual successor to that. So if you like those kinds of games, definitely worth it. Things you need to know most. For one, you can play City Skylines right now for free because from November 10th to the 14th At the over game on store, Steam, huh? it's oh, free it's to download Steam? and try for yourself. And the other thing you need to know is this game is amazing for screwing around. Oh, and also oh, it was November. Like Dang it, I missed it. I cities. missed it. I wouldn't Dang personally it. know unless you count what I'm doing here where I'm changing a simple bridge into something a little more adventurous. Yeah, let's go with adventurous. Sorry, <laughs> officer. I hope you don't have anywhere to be in a hurry. And in addition to this, what we're also heck? just trying to make people as unhappy as possible. And if we're lucky, a bunch of, quote, natural disasters will bless our city. Somebody Can call the lose fire city department. Skylines? Just kidding. I, I deleted not. all those. I mean, this is all kind of a form of city management, He's basically right? made so LA. If you're up he's for he's some basically city building made LA. Or city unbuilding. Maybe take a gander at the link in the <laughs> description, which will take you where you need to go to get Linky started. Linky in the so description. Oh, I wish I added that as a card. I'm sure the game agrees with me that City Skylines is a blast. And thanks again to Paradox for sponsoring. So our first major thing we have to do is find a way to get all of these resources from this base and we're going to move it over here to something new. Specifically, these beautiful floating platforms. I mean, look at all the lush landscape here. We've got platforms to put stuff. We've got waterfalls. And we've also got all kinds of flora to destroy. Who said you could grow in my new base? But don't worry. We have a tried and true solution. Oh for that. man, what do you think it sounds of this like an tree? HOA. Uh, much. Oh, much better. And I haven't forgotten about you, pesky leaves. Everybody gets a piece. Oh, but there's so much of this to take out. That's okay. I think I have a solution for how to take care of this stuff quickly. It's called explosives. First yep. things first, we oh, gotta explosives. do a quick test. I realize this doesn't seem like it'll pack a punch, but it should be enough to take care of this little old. All right, I'm a little late. Do we get anything else? Desecrates nature. Yeah, we're about to get that. I'm just gonna click it in advance. Oh, hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We got that. That's the free space. I found out you can audit, edit that, so I added I added it. Technically, yeah, technically jetpack. We'll do jetpack too. I see what the comments were saying. This does kind of feel like a free, like they're all free spaces at this point. We're marking things off at an alarming rate. Tree. Here goes nothing. Yep, that sure worked a treat, didn't it? Well, I think we know what needs to happen now. We gotta put these things all oh, over no. the place. There's plenty to go just around. Off the top. You know, I kinda have to wonder, is this overkill for one plant? Like, I could just walk up and do this to all of those. But who wants to do landscaping with their hands? Anyway, I'm sure that this will be enough. We've got explosives in pretty much everything. Too many? No such thing. And it's not just up here, either. We've also rigged everything down here. <laughs> these trees are gonna be no match for all these explosives. Anyway, here goes nothing. Yeah, take that, all you individual little bushes. Uh-oh, did I miss <laughs> Screw one? These Just kidding. <laughs> bushes in particular. Oh, see, now this is what progress looks like. If by progress, we mean combusting everything not nailed down. Yep, that'll about do it. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily know, because it turns out some of this foliage is permanent. But that's okay. Uh -huh. Anyway, now that we have all this emptied out space, it's time to bring our stuff. I have made my world two things, primarily. One is Doggo Protection Agency, because of the last LGIO video. The second one is protecting nature and preserving nature. So it's, you know, when I accidentally blow things up and it breaks the trees, I'm a little sad. So I'm trying to preserve as much nature as possible, which is probably why I'm going to dismantle Tentacle Town, which is my spaghetti, basically. My spaghetti weave belts. So this is the exact opposite of what <laughs> I do in my world. Surprisingly, though, this is kind of a tangent, but I hear that the game save takes longer to save or, or no, the performance goes down in the game when you destroy more things in the game. And I wonder why that is. I can I can understand a save taking longer to save because it's like actual changes to the world. So in the database, like 
far as I know, games usually use a database of textures and references for all of the things that are in game that are populated in game. So it would make sense that if you have to store registries of modified objects in game that it would take longer to cycle through them. So if the save actually does take that long, you know, take longer to save, then they probably have some optimization to do on on how to read all of those modifications. Game space state includes all the vegetation. Every time you destroy a plant, that missing plant must be recorded in a save. True, but if they're using a database to record those changes, uh, database operations are much faster than reading a file. So you know what, actually, that gives me an idea. Maybe they record if the save actually does take longer to save or the performance goes down. Maybe they're actually reading the change of the modifications from like a text list like a CSV file or something. I wonder if that's true. I'm sure the modders of Satisfactory know this or, or actually Coffee Stain Studios. I mean, they have an awesome community team. If you write it in a database file, then usually usually it's pretty fast to read those types of things. Over. Starting with our desert base because it's closer. And in case you're wondering what are we going to do with all of these drones? Are we going to use that them for is... beautiful transporting? And the answer is no. What I'm trying to say is this thing is like a monument oh, it's now. not so quite there's no way FPS we're touching flight it. That, and honestly, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. All you need to do is look to the sky and there's Drone Tasia just waiting for <laughs> For you. So you're probably wondering, if not the drones, how are we going to transport all of this stuff? Because, oh boy, is there a lot. You know, like these things, and these things, and all of this stuff. But don't you worry, the solution is right in front of us. It's called- Drones is vehicular chaos? Yes, I agree. Uh, I don't have ve vehicular chaos. So if you have that card- you can mark that one off. Called a tractor. So versatile, so bulky. And we're going to use it to get over this ridge right here. And it's not going to be as easy as just hopping in and driving this thing over everything. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's pretty good at handling some of this. But we can't possibly ask it to handle all of this, can we? Wait, or can we? Easy, easy. Just watch your head, buddy. Nope, I take it back. We are nice and stuck. And it's not like we can just start it even closer because there's no way it's going to be able to traverse all this stuff. But that's okay. We're going to employ the use of another friend do you remember these jump pads here's a refresher in case you don't remember that's it they you know i always did say in my satisfactory playthrough i wish that the vehicles or at least the explorer had a borderlands style boost so you could like boost up and do jumps and stuff like that. I never thought to use the jump pad. Launch you. But the one thing I don't know for sure is if we can use trucks on these. So let's give it a shot and find out. Here goes nothing. Oh, well, shiver me timbers. It does work. It, well, this nice. gives me an idea. If we can get it to bounce off one like that, then why not more? You get to set their overall trajectory. I love this game. The fact that you can, can do this stuff. that any way you want. So if I move this so that it's basically going to land right here, and then I take another one and I place it here so that whatever's flying off of this first pad will fly right into the air and then land on this one. And then will it bounce up and fly all the way over there? Only one way to find out. Here goes landing on one. All right, let's see if it lands on two. Oh my goodness, it sure does. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can see where this is going to go, right? All we need to do is put a bunch of these things all around over here so that they can get us up there. This shouldn't be hard at wait, all. Wait, wait, we can, wait. Just can you actually control the truck's trajectory? Because when you're in the air as a a player with the jetpack, even without the jetpack, you can kind of influence where you're going to land by just holding down the WSAD keys or, you know, the um, the directional keys. Can you do that when you're in a vehicle? Build foundations and then put our little jump pads on these, positioning them in such a way so that we have a good place to put the next one. And then once that one's in position, I love this already. We just go ahead and set up for the next one. And we know where it's going to land and then so on and so forth. And OK, hold, please. Okay, so I was working on these for a while. And oh boy, all the things I have to show for it. So many jump pads. I wish this jump pad business was an Olympic sport because hey, I would smart. definitely get like he set up four or instead like of one. Place. Anyway, let me get to the starting points. Your frame rate does determine your trajectory sometimes. I don't exactly know how it works, but if you go through the hypertubes over a long distance, if you use a hypertube cannon, you will definitely not go as far sometimes and go farther sometimes. And I think it depends on your actual like CPU speed or something like your, your resources. I don't really know why. I don't know if it's the engine that actually goes like if it's processing different parts or like trying to LOD the, the long distance loading, loading on distance. I forget what LOD stands for, but it doesn't matter. Depending on what's going on in the game, it will change how far your momentum of your character. So he, he's using the four jump pads together. So it, he needs less accuracy, which is good. He said, hold, please. Heck yes. <laughs> hold, please. This should work. Level of detail. Oh, Severus, that's a good point. 
thank you it is level of level of detail because it's loading in the distance that's where my brain was at maybe if it skips frames where you're accelerating it it reduces your overall speed because it forgets to accelerate you Oh, uh, if it's used, oh, it might be tied to frame rate. The world coordinates calculations because the momentum is determined by frame rate. That could be it. I feel like that's a common setup, tying certain things to frame rate. Although that's that's normally a console thing. It's an optimization that a lot of developers will use on console. I don't know. That's a good point. You can experience the whole thing as it was meant to be experienced. So here's basically how it works. We get in this truck and then we go down to this first jump pad. And once we do that, it bounces up to here and then it goes up to here. And then this bounces you farther and farther and uh, you get the idea. Will this actually work? Only one way to find out. Let's go. Ah, mission successful on the first couple of bounces leading up to these bounce pads that should propel us forward. And oh boy, do we have a journey ahead of us. But the good news is my horn works yeehaw well well got a little off kilter there but it looks like we're back on as you can see this is an exact science what a lovely new way to experience all the <laughs> ins and outs the nooks and crannies of this base oh my god it's going so well so far well, that'll teach me to say anything. I guess and you can't control two, direct Much cleaner lift off this time. I have high confidence. Look how we're landing on each one of those pads. We, You know, and you can say what you want, but you sure can't beat these views. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks like that's it for us. Nope. No, it's not. Oh, it only took two tries, but we made it up. Yep. The system is perfect. And before <laughs> you know it, we're catapulting across these beautiful canyons. It couldn't be more simple, except for that one that I really didn't think we were going to make. I would like to take this opportunity to mention that I cannot believe this is working <laughs> at all. <laughs> Well, that's what I get for saying yeah, that. Yeah, you jinxed okay, it. Okay, attempt number 553. And then we bounce off the thing, and then it's like, oops, so oh, it makes it after all. Things are going great. I don't know this for sure, but I think one of the challenges is, especially with a vehicle, it's not an exact science. But also, frame rate might play a role in that. But if there's one thing I can tell you, my frame rate is anything but stable. That doesn't mean the, I'm not yeah. confident we can eventually get this. Still going. This is the farthest we've ever... Never mind. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, I think Just this don't might say be anything. I think we might make it to the next That's section. Look at all these successful matter. bounces. Life is beautiful. I set there up all go. of these bounce pads, and for what? This wow. moment, that's what. Look, the finish line. We can see it. Nail it. How many nail it. jumps oh my God, did he make? <laughs> Close enough. Okay, so I think we can agree that this is not going according to plan. And like you, I had a dream of trucks just flying fancy free through the sky. But I think this was probably never meant to be, and I'll show you why. I'm watching this thing from far away, and at a point, something seems to happen. Now, I know from back here, it looks like it's fine, Oh, right? no. It looks like it's it just hanging out on something. Oh, but that's not the case. Calculations it's just frozen in midair. And then the as player. we get closer to it, it just falls right out of the sky. Which leads me to believe that even if we got this working the way we would like it to, there's no way we can automate it. Because if we step too far away from the trucks, they won't keep going. And we can't ride every truck to the end. Oh, but don't you worry. We've got a backup plan. That's, that's unfortunate. The game will do physics calculations depending on how far away, which makes sense. I mean, satisfactory unloads things that are too far away and it keeps like your factories, your items on the belts. They don't have to be populated in the world to actually be transferred to a different spot in the, the world or other machines, you know. They're doing calculations in the background of the game to simulate the entire factory setup that you have that's out of out of view. I guess they're doing the same thing with physics calculations, which to be fair, I mean, that's probably an efficient design because if you can imagine a game like this, this is hundreds of square miles, it feels like. It's probably not hundreds of square miles, but it, it, hundreds of acres, I guess. Simulating that much is probably not gonna work on low budget hardware. That, I wonder if they're ever gonna put this on consoles. That would be awesome. Man. But before we move on, we gotta test one thing. We gotta test to see what happens when we launch one of these guys. What's wrong, little guy? Why are you so- Oh no, you don't. Get back here. Where are you going? Hey, where are you going? I said, where are you going? Yes, run straight to the bounce pads. Ah, there oh, we go. Dog. Fly free, little guy. It's for science. Oh. oh it's, it's probably fine, right? Don't worry, I'm sure he's just sleeping. All the- Poor doggo. Rip doggo. Rest in peace, Mr. Doggo. I think that counts as captive audience and animal cruelty. And he's fine. How do I not have a bingo yet? Oh.
way down this dune. In conclusion, it seems like it worked really well. Anyway, we still need a good solution for transporting all these materials, and I think this is going to be the solution. It's another train station. Station 25? We can do better than that. Let's see. I want to say sand and successful. Wait, stop right there. Sand cesspool. Wait, sand -cesspool. still not done. Sand cesspool. Yay, we <laughs> did it. We got there. So we've used Accurate. trains before. Not really to actually transport anything. Back in our old base, we actually have a bunch of trains rolling around right now. They're legitimately here solely to generate electricity, which causes these nuclear plants over here to actually work. Because if they have no reason to generate energy, they won't. And if they're not generating electricity, really? then they're not generating toxic waste. And if we're not taking steps to ruin every Was part this of the an environment, update five what's thing? the point? Anyway, all that to say, back over at this base, we've never tried to use trains for good. I'm not going to miss an opportunity to build a bunch of rails, especially because where we're building them could use a little more beautifying, don't you think? I know I do. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Especially because I know this will be easy to do and take no time at all. And connected. Well, that was easy. I'm kind of showing you the end first, but here we are at our station. Why am I like this? Or as I like to pronounce it, yummy, like this. So this thing here is where our trains will eventually end up. And by that, I mean there are rails everywhere. Coming from the station, going over cliff sides, impossible loops that don't really make sense. And then, you know, all kinds of stuff. This part probably wasn't necessary to get the job done, but boy, it sure is fun. And it wow. doesn't really improve once we get to the main mess. You can kind of tell which ones for trains and which aren't okay, because the train on. ones are just this... a lot bigger. Either way, before we mess with these any further. This is a little bit more crazy than you might think just by looking at all of these loops and swoops. In order to actually place these, you have to be standing on something, which means Josh actually built out a bunch of foundations or something to stand on to actually get to the other side of the, uh, of the train track when you set it. So Josh has built so many things to get this created. I'm surprised he didn't do a, you know, four hours later or something like that. It's got to be at least that. There is fun, and it doesn't really improve once we get to the main mess. You can kind of tell which ones for trains and which aren't, because the train ones are just a lot bigger. Either way, before we mess with these any further, let's head back to our starting platform and make sure this thing works at all. Now leaving station sand cesspool. So the first part of this journey is real obvious and easy. We pick up great speed as we enter the big avalanche of stuff. I like to think of this as the world's weirdest roller coaster, <laughs> full of twists and turns, clipping through the rock face entirely, and in general, just a whole lot of complete completely unnecessary twists and turns. But really, what would the point be if it were straightforward? <laughs> Besides, this gives you a chance to take in all these glorious views, and then eventually you find you know, yourself on the other satisfying. side. You know, it is kind of satisfying. thank goodness there's no clipping, because I can just build these rails over rails. What a space-saving convenience, with probably no consequences whatsoever. And then before you know it, we arrive at the other station safe and sound. Yami like this indeed. And if this train <laughs> were pulling cargo behind it, this little claw thing would unload it before the train goes back on its way. So let's go ahead and finish this track. So the whole thing is one solid loop of amazing cargo management. Besides, you saw how quickly we oh, did it the first wait, time. Oh, he's doing won't... he's doing the subway idea. It's, or I guess it's a train idea. Don't take long at all. <gasps> that was glitching through the world. How how do I not have bingo yet? <laughs> <laughs> and then before you know it, ta-da! Track is complete. Excellent. Setting up this behemoth of rails and other crap only took a mere four hours. Good God. I mean, the good news is I didn't know that this base could get any weirder looking, but it turns out there's always room to improve. So let's pretend you're this up and coming rail put on car that just about to pull into the catwalks. station. Now you can just keep going and have yourself the return journey of a lifetime, co-mingling with all these conveyor belts in the most claustrophobic way possible. Wow, what a palate <laughs> cleanser. Honey, I'm home. Round trip only took 10 whole minutes. What a thrill ride. Now that the train tracks are all set, Impressive. the next thing we need to do, route. we need to take all these materials here that are currently just waiting for something to happen to them, and we need to funnel them all the way back over to the train station. So first things first, I'm adding a freight platform, which if we come around to the other side, we can see that it's got ports for us to feed in the goods. That's where the supplies go to get on the trains. So first oh, we're going to build a bunch showing of us these how to use trains this time. Nazi giant containers. Now these two on the right are for receiving items. We're not going to need those 
closed because we're only sending stuff out from here, which means connecting this container over to this thingamabob here. And same with the bottom one for basically no reason. There we go. The conveyor belts are running and hungry for supplies. So basically, previously, we had all of these supplies funneled through one belt already, which is this one right here. Instead, we're going to run these supplies over to that container that we set up. There we go. And now supplies go in. And on the other side, they pile out, conveniently going into our cargo thingamabob so that we can more easily transport Wait, we just... everything. What a lovely system we've made. Are we just making a giant train supply chain so that he can have an even longer sushi belt? I'm surprised he didn't put any nuclear waste on here. Oh, right. He's doing something else with the nuclear waste for ourselves. Now, the next step is we need to add a freight car like that. That way, the train's going to pull into the station, deliver to us some sweet, sweet cargo, and then off it goes for a magical journey. And it sure is hauling ass with that cargo. What a harrowing journey it must be going on. And then before you know it, here comes our bountiful cargo. Choo, choo. Quickly, use your grippy fingers to take that off my hands. And just like that, glorious supplies. And then the train starts its journey home to get another haul. Well, if one thingy of cargo is good, Surely more is better, right? I mean, really, how many of these can we add? Because I'm many just going to keep add? going oh. until it stops me. That's that's a bingo card. Do I have it? How many can we? Yeah, that's that's one for me. Work. Still no bingo. Why? <laughs> So based on initial <laughs> estimates, no, there is not a limit to how many train cars you can put on this thing. Like, Wait, it's kind of really? hard to see because it's just more cacophony in here. I mean, I just kept connecting and connecting them. And I think I've got like 146 before I gave up. Because there's a point where I want to keep adding them. But when you get too deep into this stuff, you just can't see anything. So I guess let's see how this does. I ho silver. All of this goodness slowly pulling into the station. And go ahead and load <laughs> cargo container number one. Oopsie daisy, drop it a little forcefully see if I care and now moving on to the next one or not oh, okay you're just gonna take the one huh oh silly me I didn't set up the station correctly I selected one load and unload not all of them like I was supposed to well it's still not stopping but I think that's probably yeah okay. I think and, you, you know need... I kind of like the idea of using all I thought you needed as many station freight stations as you had train cars. So I don't know if he's actually going to be able to set this up. Does it work this way? I don't actually know how to use trains that well. I've only set up one one train route. So will the train start past the station, stop for the next car and then so on? I don't think so. You guys got bingo. I, I'm so unlucky. <laughs> All of this freight, all for just one cargo container, followed by eight bajillion right empty there. ones. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I feel like this is the right way to do it. I mean, he's impressed. See? Really impressed. And honestly, so far, so good. It's just slowly making its way downtown. Yeah, just shove that out of the way. It's of no concern to you. It failed where you're succeeding. Come on, come on, you can do it. Push. Come on, pick up some speed. <laughs> Would these drones say no? I don't think so. They keep climbing. I don't care that you're pulling a bajillion cars behind you. I expect you to accomplish the impossible. Oh, yeah, definitely the optimal way to be transporting goods at one one millionth a mile an hour. Strike that. Zero. Are you telling me there were consequences to this well this is stupid wow Can I, like get behind it and push or something hey wait that's actually a pretty robust physics system so like the torque that you the max torque that you can apply to one train car does have a limit and it actually is calculating the weight drag by the the drag that occurs because of the weight of your cars so there's the base car the train car weight plus whatever freight you've got and that's creating drag when you go up elevation which is applied against your torque that that your train car provides or your uh maybe maybe it's not torque i don't i'm not a, i'm not a physics person so you know take what i'm saying for a grain of salt but that that's actually i'm surprised that it's actually working that robustly a minute. This gives me an idea. I will just give it a little push with my own rail. Okay, now remember, all we need to do is give it a little push. <laughs> Watch out, help coming through. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. It would appear we've caused a minor derailment. I love I mean, this. most of it's still on the tracks. And the important part is the head of the train felt nothing at all <laughs> and is still not moving. What if I send another train in? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, it still does it. Okay. 
Yep, went about as well as expected. That's okay, cool. you know what? I have kind of an idea. So this is the thing that's stuck. There's got to be some way to move this, and I think I might have just the idea. Is it possible that we can use jump pads for this? So let's go ahead and put a platform. Jump pads and then a on jump a train? Pad. And now with this thing ready to operate, all we need to do is give this a little push. This is going to be easy. So all I'm going to do is set up a rail that's going to go right into this train car. And in theory, if we hit it just right, it should roll back onto this bounce pad and do a little something like this. Couldn't be more simple. But to give this rail some impact, we got to give it a really <laughs> long running start. How Wait. long, you wonder? How about is he actually going to send all the train cars on the bounce pad circuit? I, I, <laughs> sorry, I should be stopping for this because I want to see how this goes. About a little something like this. You know, something that goes up and up and up and up. And at the end of it all, there's a train up here just waiting for liftoff. We're so high up, in fact, that we're eye level with our hyper cannon. And also so high up that we're up here with the fog where the air is thinner. So the question is, once we get up there and pilot this interstellar craft, how fast do we think it's going to go? Well, let's see. Down the hill we go. My okay, guess so is currently we're building speed. Uh, just rounding 400, 200 kilometers, kilometers per hour. an hour. Still climbing. Nope. Time to collide. But why? <laughs> I was only going at the speed of light. Okay, what if we nudge it a little bit nicer? Well, that one down there sure felt it. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem oh, to be the, the case that this thing can interact with the jump pad. But that doesn't mean I don't the have freight some box other actually ideas. Doesn't... Like if we put a ramp right it here, detaches. what do we I think will happen? Detaches. Well, let's see. Well, that was pretty good, but not all the way to the other station good. All right, I got one more idea. I don't know if this is going to work, but we have to try. Maybe what we need is to give it a nice little nudge. There we go. We built like a crappy little tunnel. And if all goes according to plan, this thing will sail right inside barrel. it. Oh, how I love doing research with giant multi-ton death machines. Hey, look, it made it, even though we didn't. Well, that seems to have done the trick. And now we're going to see if we can try something else. We're going to run this rail right through it. And we're going to see if we put a train down right here. If when we drive this thing, we can just nudge it. And oh boy, we sure can, kind of. I think you can probably see where this is going, right? That's right. We're going to build a much larger tunnel than that. We're going to drag it all the way there. Now, we can't do it by hand because the thing has no cohesion. Oh, whoa. We can't whoa. use the vehicles because that also doesn't work. So train tracks it is. It's got... Ah, yeah, there it is. It goes it Just only collide it only collides with trains that's weird wait is this a glitch then should it not be set or separating from the train car i would expect that to have physics Maybe they just maybe they just haven't added physics to the train the freight boxes. Nudge up an otherwise really long corridor. Easy. Come on, we're just gonna keep on pushing it. Come on, come on, come with me. That's right, keep on pushing. This is not how I thought this would work, but I'm sure happy it is. And then before you know it, we're at the very end of the tracks. And <laughs> off it goes. I'm sure it's fine. Wow, look at that <laughs> landing. That almost couldn't be more perfect. This is where it would have ended up anyway. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? How did you guys get in there? Oh, this simply won't do. Now look, I know the cargo basically made it here, but it looks like we've got some cleaning up to do. No! Yeah, run for me. So I hope you enjoyed what we did here. There's a lot more to come, but we're going to cap it for now. So I hope you had fun. I know I did. And I'm about to. Hey, now that you've got some free time, why don't you go wow, check Josh out City Skylines? So much you can check it out for free right now. That is evil. if it's between November 10th and the 14th, 2022. But hey, you never know. Just go look it up on Steam. Maybe it's on sale right now. You don't know. Anyway, stay tuned for more Satisfactory, and I'll see you next time. Get over here. <laughs> uh, it's a familiar sight, unfortunately. At <laughs> the end of the video, and I'm mourning the loss of a doggo again. I didn't get bingo! <laughs> this is the second time! Although, apparently, I, I did miss a bingo card that I got last time. But this time, I just have crap luck. Josh didn't die. He didn't cause pollution. Well, he caused pollution last video, but not this video. Let's find out. I feel like I might have missed that one. Is there a limit wouldn't have mattered if I, I might have missed that one too? Well, I hope you had better luck. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder why the train car freight boxes don't have physics except for the train cars. I It might be intentional. It's, I think it's very deliberate only to have it interact with trains because otherwise a single derailment might crash the game. Oh.
Yeah, this might be kind of a an optimization, like a lesser of two evils situation where you design it that way intentionally. Maybe, I don't know. You would expect to be able to jump on freight cars and everything because it, it has physics when it's attached to the train car. I think they have a, like a deliberate change when it detaches that it doesn't have physics anymore. That's weird. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun. Bingo was fun. I'm going to be doing that more often and hopefully we can use it for non-satisfactory LGIO videos as well. Kind of want to make Bingo for spiffing brit as as well but i'm not as familiar with spiffing brit's videos but i had fun i hope you did too thank you for watching if you like this video click like and subscribe click the bell for notifications i've got a few other videos coming out soon check out my satisfactory let's play series uh over in my channel as well as my ways to chill videos if you're looking for something new and relaxing to play otherwise uh i hope you have a wonderful evening and uh bye, -bye.